appears the White House is getting some pre-midterm jitters, finally. A new report from Politico details concerns among the president's inner circle. The outlet wrote this. Despite public displays of confidence, and anxiety is growing within the White House and allied Democrats that Republicans will capture at least one chamber of Congress and possibly both. But even with those fears, President Joe Biden plans to remain largely on the sidelines during the race's final fortnight. On the sidelines and also silent, the president refusing to take questions and mocking the reporters asking them yesterday during an Oval Office meeting with Israel's president, his handlers taking that one step further, screaming back and shutting it down. I mean, Kellyanne, you and I both remember those moments, but there seems to be something else going on here. Nancy Cook, reporter, pointing out that the Biden White House seems particularly intent on the press not asking any questions 14 days ahead of the midterms with White House aides screaming in the faces of reporters. I think that hits the nail on the head. It does. It's a real affront, actually, to democracy. And you have the Democrats running around, including former President Obama, threats to democracy, American democracies on the ballot. Yes, that's why we need debates so people can access information for free mm -hmm. and suss out and assess these candidates for themselves. And that's why we need a president, no matter who he or she is, to stand up and speak up and address basic questions from the fourth estate. Now, we both worked for President Trump where he would spend an hour under wing or out on the lawn uh, taking these questions impromptu impromptu walking into the press briefing room or in the Oval Office. That wasn't everybody's cup of tea, as was Twitter, but guess what? It was the democratization of information. Everybody mm -hmm. received presidential communication instantly and free of charge. We have the opposite now. And Kayla, I think that this indifference to an outright hostility towards the media is going to have, a, it's going to create a backlash among some smarter people in the media who have had enough. They believe the media are on their side. They think that the media are wearing team blue jerseys at all time and pushing for candidates like Fetterman or Warnock or Mandela Barnes. And you're not supposed to you're not supposed to talk about every all the problems you have with them. The White House is the last Joe Biden seems to be the last person in the country to realize that inflation, rising costs and rising crime are the number two issues. The USA Today Suffolk poll today says today literally that they sit think upwards of 40 percent of Hispanics and 21 percent of African Americans may vote Republican. That's a USA Today poll. That's huge. And Harris, to that point, this political article, which takes us behind the scenes in the West Wing, mm -hmm. says the White House is worried about the late breaking issues of the economy and crime. <laughs> I don't know where they've been, but we've been covering these quote late breaking issues since last year. Well, you know, um, it is interesting to see the president <laughs> sort of struggle these last few days with where he fits in and so he sits back and he tries to you know he'll make fun of us I, you know making fun of the media doesn't exactly make you special there are a lot of people <laughs> who don't like us but not being able to answer our questions yeah. might put him in kind of a special category for instance they want to tout certain segments of the economy right now they want to go after particularly Kevin McCarthy on leading the Republicans on the issues of Social Security, Medicare, and crashing the economy. They don't want to wear what Moody said today proves that we're treading in water. We're just waiting for a recession to happen. Mm -hmm. We had back-to-back -back GDP negative growth in two quarters, quarters one and two, third quarter, just a teeny little bit, or as the president likes to say, just inches, just <laughs> inches. And so that puts us moving forward 0.4%. We're treading water at this point. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to be asked about that. But that now that they have reflexively flipped the conversation to the economy to try to fight back because abortion didn't work for them, it's still down the list of things that Americans say are most important as they go to the polls. They can't really talk about the economy. And Saudi Arabia just said, and I quote the, the energy minister, we turned out to be the grown-ups in the room. Mm -hmm. Remember how Biden was saying that we, the Americans, were going to be the grown-ups? No, they, they decided to be the mature guys in the room and start cutting two, billion, two million barrels of oil off the market a day. We're about to tap our home heating oil source right now yep. to keep up with diesel. They don't want to talk about the economy, so he can mouth blah, blah, blah right. for the reporters. We can do that right back.
Yeah, people are suffering, Mark. I mean, that's the reality yeah. of this. And Biden, you know, they've been hiding him away. Air Force One grounded, saying, oh, you could do other things. You know, one of which was going to the DNC. He gave a 34-minute talk about his accomplishments. But pollsters have told him, Mr. President, show some empathy here. People are suffering, and no president wants to admit defeat or failure. Nevertheless, that would go a long way. Yeah, and, and you know, qu quite frankly, he's been completely oblivious to what voters really care about. And what they care about right now is inflation, crime, border and that should be on the prompter with you know end of quote repeat the line underneath it and he should go back and do it again without saying those two lines um yeah. and the fact that he's so oblivious that that's why they're they're running out this Biden biden or biden in the basement strategy the same strategy they rolled out in 2020 which got him to where he is today because he is actually his own worst enemy right now. And he's toxic to the other Democrats who are trying to win their election right now. Yeah, and what's interesting is Biden was obsessed with Trump, then he was obsessed with DeSantis. And this article, I've seen this twice, apparently he's obsessed with Ron Johnson losing out in Wisconsin, who's ahead in real clear politics by 3.3%. So it is funny, he like, rather than focusing on his job, tends to find these Republicans to obsess over. Right, uh, well, because remember, we're always the enemy, and also as someone's, um, I'll just say their range of motion decreases. They tend to perseverate on one point, right? Him over and over again. And he, he just drove with, with um, whoever's... Uh, Jay Leno. Thank you. Yes, we yeah. have that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that reminded me... Do you guys remember when uh, the late Prince Philip aged 97, was driving in the Range Rover and then got into a car accident and then a month later surrendered his license. That's how I felt watching our commander-in-chief drive 100 miles an hour on, on Jay Leno's show, prioritizing entertainment and joy and levity and some type of attempt at displaying what is that competence? Is it acuity? Because last time I checked, there's a failure to empathize, to acknowledge for accessibility. There is a failure on all levels by our president to do anything, including serve the American people because we pay his salary. And yet he just goes, and whoever allowed that, by the way, that's reckless. Do you remember when he was test driving a car and he threatened to run over a reporter? Yeah. He was yes. He was yes. Joking, he the said. unifier. I mean, yeah. I remember when he was licking an ice cream cone saying the economy was strong as bleep. Oh. You know, so that was, that was last that week. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this week. Come hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page.